Hello everyone and welcome to my show Being Canadians. Today is the second episode of Being Canadians as I will be interviewing a younger individual, Leanne Khazanchi, to talk more to her with her about the contribution of Arab Canadians in the Canadian society. Hi Leanne, Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. Okay, I would uh, like to start introducing you as a graduate student of uh, York University. Yes, I just recently completed my undergrad at York in Communication Studies. Mm -hmm. um, I'm now in grad school for Corporate Communications and Public Relations um, in a condensed program hoping to graduate by December. Okay, I wanted to also mention that you are the currently the president of uh, MISA organization. Which yes. Is Yes, I am. I'm the current president for the 2015-2016 year. Perfect. Can you tell me more about MISA as an organization and how did it start? Yeah, for sure. Um, MISA is the Middle Eastern Students Association, um, mainly on the York University campus. Um, it's a social, educational and cultural association. Um, that mission statement is to unite, progress, achieve. We host events in Toronto and in the GTA um, to anyone, not, not, nece not necessarily Middle Eastern. Yeah. Um, and we try to stand up, stay away from anything political or religious or anything that stirs up controversy because we try to uphold the Middle Eastern name and um, spread the more positive image. So you said mainly it's on York, uh, in York, on York campus, but did it spread out to any other universities? Actually, yes, it did. It uh, initiated at York University and now there are um, locations at University of Toronto Mississauga, University of Toronto St. George, Ryerson, and then the newer ones are Brock and Windsor. Okay, and what was your goal of and motivation behind uh, contributing in such an organization? Um, so I was born and raised in Kuwait back in the Middle East mm -hmm. um, and I would go back and forth between Toronto and Kuwait depending on my father's work. Um, and then I did my first year of university actually in Kuwait and then transferred to York uh, for my undergrad. And I kind of tried to find something like my sense of belonging, um, someone that spoke a similar language, ate a similar mm -hmm. food, had a similar culture or tradition. Um, and I found that in MISA and upon joining the group I started off as a volunteer and then um, moved up a position for the past four years. Um, my goal within the, within, the, or within the association is to A, follow the mission statement which is to unite, progress, achieve but also um, create a sense of belonging for others just like it created for me. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. What are the, gra the greatest accomplishments of uh, MISA as an organization? So um, I would say the greatest accomplishments are two. First of all, the kind of events we hold. Mm -hmm. So like I mentioned, we hold um, social, educational, and cultural yeah. events. So we try to um, have a variety of events and not cater towards a specific niche. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the kind of events we hold um, are some of my greatest accomplishments. To mention a few, we've had, not too long ago, last month, we've had the Annual Middle Eastern Gala, which is a yeah. collaboration with the universities. I've been to that one. <laughs> which is a collaboration <laughs> across uh, the GTA with all other universities. Mm -hmm. And then um, other events like on campus, like our Multicultural Week, which is a week-long series of, of events where we um, show everyone what the Middle Eastern culture is like. Um, so those are some of the events, like some of the accomplishments that I'm really proud of. And then also um, the name mm -hmm. that it has right now and the reputation, I'm also very proud of. It's one of the largest organizations and clubs on campus. Yeah, and it is very well known. And yeah. the membership is uh, constantly expanding. So I would say those are my accomplishments. All right. And for students, I mean, for individuals, for Arab Canadian individuals that did not get the chance to um, connect to their backgrounds, how does uh, MISA and similar organizations like MISA help rebuild this kind of connection? So the kind of events we hold are extremely diverse. So we hold um, events that if people are more interested in something a little bit more social, they can come out to um, our more social setting type of, type of events. But for people who aren't necessarily too intertwined or too familiar with the uh, Middle Eastern culture, we do host a lot of cultural events where they can come out and see things like what kind of foods do you eat back home or um, a hobby or an activity or some kind of like a cultural workshop just to kind of see what type of things are done back home and kind of like take from take yeah. take whatever they can from um, the events we hold. So I feel like the kind of events we um, host are very um, welcoming to people whether you are whether you've lived in the Middle East all your life or whether you just realize that you are a Middle Eastern and like I'm really interested in knowing about what my culture actually is. Yeah and what kind of difficulties do you face uh, as an organization or a cultural organization that while you're trying to achieve your goals? Um, I don't really think we face much in anything too uh, serious, um, just like minor things like any other association. Okay. Um, like I mentioned, we try to st stay away from anything religious or political just because um, we try to separate 
the notion and the stereotypical image that we have back home of the wars and the, the sadness that's back in the Middle East, and we try to uphold the positive image. So anything controversy related, we try to avoid. Yeah. yeah. And how do you find support from to, towards these uh, organizations from Canadian society? Um, well, we are recognized by the Student Union at mm -hmm. York, which is the York Federation of Students. Um, we're also recognized by, by another department, which is the Student Community and Leadership Development Department. Mm -hmm. So those are the two um, departments that I would say like are Canadian, we're supported by them. Yeah. Um, and we're also, uh, putting that aside, uh, we have sponsors that aren't necessarily Arab or Middle Eastern um, that just support the organization and want to see um, more events and what kind of stuff we can hold. So I, I guess that's kind of how we have yeah. Canadian support. Yeah. yeah. In your personal opinion, what encourages the contribution of Arab Canadian youth in the Canadian society? Um, I think today there are many initiatives and organizations mm -hmm. um, in Canada and primarily in Toronto um, that cater towards Canadian Arabs, whether that's educational or um, for someone to come out to learn more about it, uh, whether that's in a lecture setting or in something a little bit more social. Um, personally, I interned at the Canadian Arab Institute twice. Um, my first one was I was a communications and web intern mm -hmm. and the second time uh, it was a collaboration with the National Council of Canada Arab Relations in Ottawa and I was a parliamentary intern. That was, this was last summer. Um, and then I'm also um, uh, ambassador with the Arab Development Initiative which is uh, primarily based in Montreal. So I feel like there's many uh, initiatives and institutes that are um, whether they're startups or wh whether they've been there for a while, that kind of promote or encourage people to come out to, the, to, come out to their yeah. uh, workshops or events to learn a little bit more about what the, um, how they can contribute being an Arab Canadian in the Canadian society. Yeah. So as a young Canadian Arab, if you were to change one aspect in the Arab Canadian community, what would it be and why? Um, an aspect I would change would be to banish the stereotypes as much as I could mm -hmm. that currently exist um, That's true. about yeah. Canadian Arabs. Um, I feel like people kind of misinterpret what our culture is and, and, that, and how diverse the culture can be and how multicultural we are. Um, when we say Middle East, Middle East consists of so many different countries, so many different mm -hmm. cultures, and I feel like if people actually give it a chance and know what it's actually about as opposed to just stereotyping it as, yes, I know there's a war going on, or yes, there's something happening. I feel like that's um, like something that I would like hope for would be yeah. gone. Yeah, And that kind of goes along with the whole uh, mission statement for me, so yeah. to unite, progress, achieve. It's something that we would all want to change. Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay, how did being a Canadian influence uh, your life? Like looking at yourself today, what would be different if you weren't a Canadian? Um, so. As mentioned, I was born and raised in Kuwait, so in the Gulf, a very small country in the Gulf. Um, and I would move back and forth between Kuwait and Canada, depending mm -hmm. on my father's work. Um, my mother is Palestinian and my father is Kashmiri, so I come from both um, very coloni well, colonized lands. Yeah. So I moved Unfortunately. To, yeah, <laughs> for, I moved to Canada in 97, mm -hmm. and they welcomed us with open arms. We lived here, I, I've been living here basically all my life, just going back and forth. Um, and I'm proud to be able to say that this is what I call home. Yeah, that's beautiful. All right, thank you, Leanne, for being with me today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.